I mean, yeah, I think uh, as a player, uh, your talent, like, I only have as much talent as I have today. I don't, like, maybe when I go back to the offseason, I might be able to get a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, but that's only going to take me so far. The only way I can feel as if I can get better is if um, I take all these lessons from them. It's like reading multiple books. If I, if I can learn what they what they know, um, I can put that into my game, and I feel like I can get better, much better, way faster um, that way. Brandon, can you take me back to where you were when you found out Christian McCaffrey was traded here and how you found out? I was uh, I was at home. I was playing Madden, and my phone just kept ringing, kept ringing, and everybody was calling me. And I knew uh, McCaffrey was like there was that was talked about around the league about him being um, going to be on the move soon. And then I just I was just I don't know, I just somehow I can't remember exactly who it was, but I finally picked up my phone and I saw his name. So then I went on Instagram and then I saw you know, all the blogs, all the the fan pages talking about it. And then yeah, so I was at home playing Madden. What, what did, when you said you heard the rumors like before that, did you think there was any way he was going to land here? And a couple guys saying no. No, I didn't. No, I didn't think there was a chance. I didn't, there was a chance. Yeah, just because you didn't have a lot of draft picks, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> just because you know how it is. You just just like with the guys that we have and. You know, you don't want to get too far into the, the situation, whatever the situation may be. You got to you just have a feeling like when it seems realistic to get a player or not, and it just didn't seem that way. So when we got him, it was this was it was, it was a big shot. What kind of message did it send to this locker room that they made a big move like that? Like we weren't playing around. That this is the season. <laughs> if not if not now, then when? Well, we we see it, you know, just with the naked eye, the spacing that he kind of helps create offensively, just the tension that he creates. What what is it like to? Be on the field at the same time running routes. When, uh, how how big of a difference has it made in in, in your eyes with him on the field? Um, I think just it's just a, it's another guy to account for. Um, like we come in there and, and we talk um, in the team meetings, we talk about guys that they have to account for. Um, the opposite team for that our defense has to account for. Um, and it's normally one guy, two guys, maybe quarterback and another guy most of the time. When you have Four receivers, a running, two running backs, possibly three if you want to, you know, a tight, multiple tight ends just all across the board, and then you add another one, a Christian. It just, what do you want to do? So we just realized that when he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna definitely warrant attention, and, he, and he's done that. Brandon, how big is experience in the playoffs? If you've gone through it before now, how big really is experience when you come to these games and close to uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't really answer that question. I know uh, my first playoff game, I was ready to go. So whether it's the first playoff game or the 10th playoff game, um, this is only my, this will be my fourth. So I don't know if that's considered experience, but um, everybody's going to wake up for it. You know, that you might not have another chance that we have one guaranteed game left. Um, we're here on Tuesday. We don't know if we're going to be here on. We're, it's not guaranteed that we'll be back in this locker room next Tuesday or Wednesday to prepare for another football game. So that's the only thing I do know. So um, they feel the exact same way. So I'm sure those guys will be ready to go. Everybody will be ready to go. It'll be football at the highest level. And we'll see how it goes. When I look at this offense right now, I mean, there's so many weapons. That, and it just gets distributed among all of you guys. That has to be a real confidence feeling that there's no one particular guy that people can concentrate on because somebody else can pick up the mantle if that happens. Yeah, we have. We feel like we have a bunch of guys throughout the whole entire offense, throughout this whole locker room, um, that can make plays, that can win football games. Um, we have all of them together um, in this type of um, atmosphere with all this on the line. I'm excited to see what we do. Um, it'll be definitely fun for sure. Um, but now it's, it's more so anything, anything goes. You know, during the season, it's you have your own personal stuff that you want to get done along with team-oriented goals. But now that's all. That's all in the past. Everything, whether it's one ball, ten balls, fifteen balls, or no ball, like each play matters. Whether that's affecting the game with the football or without it. So that's how we look at it. Um, we'll see how it goes. And you might be the best example that you can have a half where we don't hear your name much. Maybe what you're doing largely involves blocking or whatever. And then a second half where you're an instrumental part of the offense because maybe they're concentrating on someone else. Does that take kind of a different mentality to go, 
I have a key contributor to this game, and I might not contribute for a half, but I got to be there in the second half. You got to be there at all times, um, and that's something that I've that I've been learning and going through in my first three seasons in the league. Is you don't know when you're, you don't know when it's going to come. It might be the first play of the game, it might be the last play of the game. Either way, you got to make a play, um, and you got to be ready uh, mentally to say, all right, if I don't touch the ball for 59 minutes. 60th minute, I might be called on to make a play, so I got to be mentally ready to be able to do that. So that's been a different part, um, um, adjusting to it, learning and growing through. But yeah. And you still have other things you can do in those 59 minutes too, when, you're not, when the ball's not coming to you, too. You know, that's another thing that comes along with. Oh yeah, for sure. When you go into, when you go into film room, um, you're getting you're getting graded, you're getting judged off what you did in those 59 minutes, not what you did. You can have a great game. I've, I've realized that you can have a great game without touching the football. Um, you can have a great game with touching football one time. And it's not it didn't have to do with, with that one time that you touched it. So we just look to try to affect the game in a positive way no matter what. Um, and and when we got guys, eleven guys on offense doing the same thing, then we're really touching the beat. Brandon, how has your relationship with Brock evolved or changed from when he first stepped in to now? Um, first stepped into the starting role, I'll clarify. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to know him now a little bit more, being able to work with him a little bit more. Um, being able to talk to him a little bit more, just talk to him football, see what type of dude he is. Um, but as we get more and more reps, you get to you get to grow with him. Um, like he's doing a great job. Um, but we're still growing. We go out there today and continue to to grow. And we're just trying to see how far we can take it, where we can take it to. Um, we're just trying to look to elevate every single week. Thank you.